Swashbucklers, you're listening to Under the Crossbones, episode number 124. My name is Phil Johnson. I'm your host for the show today and every day. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for telling your friends, doing all that kind of good stuff. You're helping me keep the ship afloat, and that's a good thing for you to do. One little quick note first off, thank you to everybody who sent me such great comments about the episode last week with Marcus Redeker. Uh, that one uh, that one touched a nerve with some folks, and it was a good nerve. It was, uh, I don't know what nerve. I want to say funny bone. It wasn't funny. I don't know. Anyway, it touched a good nerve, and people really enjoyed the show, and I got a lot of nice comments about it. So thank you for sending that. If you do like an episode, or if you don't like an episode, I guess, uh, make sure to buzz me. Hit me up on Facebook. Tell me what you think about it. My guest on the show today in episode number 124. Guests, plural, with an S, yeah. Eric Nelson and Kirby Hayborn are here, and they're both from the film Pirates of the Great Salt Lake. Uh, Eric is the writer-director. Kirby played the lead, Captain Kirk. And if you've not seen Pirates of the Great Salt Lake, here's here's where I came into it. I had seen this movie just kind of floating around the internet since it came out, like, for years. Like, I think I remember seeing it back on MySpace. Like, it was that long ago. And I had never, for some reason, gotten around to see it. It wasn't accessible. Uh, it wasn't something that was popping up in places where I could see it. And uh, and so I decided I wanted to get in contact with these guys, find out more about the movie. I did watch the movie. I got myself a copy on Amazon, which you can also do. And uh, and they were great guys. And we had a great time talking about this film. It is a quirky little film. Uh, more than Pirates of the Caribbean, think uh, like Napoleon Dynamite. It's a it's a quirky little pirate film, and it's very funny, and the cast is great, and I think you would dig it if you like pirate movies, um, because they are sort of the pirates that are trying to be pirates, but they're in modern day, so obviously not pirates, and uh, so it's a great film. You should check it out. We're going to talk to Eric and Kirby here in a second. I uh, have been, uh, I'm kind of, I'm buzzing today. I'm buzzing today. I got to go do my first show of the year tonight. First big regular show uh, out in Brentwood tonight, which means I have to get in the car at like 2.30 in the afternoon because it's rainy here. And I look, this is, I'm in California. So our version of weather is questionable at best. Uh, I know the East Coast is frozen right now and uh, other weird things are happening. But it's raining in California today, and that means California drivers will forget how to drive. So I have to get in the car at 2.30 today to go uh, pick up the gal who's featuring for me, Irene too, very, very funny. And then we're going to trek up to Brentwood to do a show tonight. And I think that's one of the things that um, people don't always know about us comedians and performers and things like that. And we always like to joke, oh, yeah, we work for an hour a day, uh, whatever it is. Totally. Oof. Boy, is that not true? Boy, it would be nice if that was true. But I'm going to get in the car at 2.30. We're going to get to the venue about 6. Uh, I'm going to sound check. I'm going to set up all that kind of good stuff. Uh, the show will be an hour and a half. Uh, Irene will do a half hour. I'm going to do an hour. We will then get back in the car. I will cruise through Berkeley and drop Irene off. And then I will come back to uh, my home in the South Bay here in San Jose. And uh, and all that is going to be uh, probably close to midnight. So between 2.30 and midnight, I will be spending most of that time commuting <laughs> in a car uh, at, all to spend an hour on stage and make some money. So it's um, it's always a long day. Sometimes these show days are very long. The weather doesn't help at all. But shows are coming up. They are. I'm getting back in it, getting back on the road. Welcome to 2018. So tonight we're doing Brentwood, which you will have missed by the time you hear this. But... Saturday, January the 13th, you can catch me at Comedy Oakland at Howden Restaurant in Oakland, California. Saturday, January the 21st, I will be at the All Out Comedy Theater, also in Oakland, California. Uh, Friday, February the 2nd, I'll be at the Poet and Patriot in Santa Cruz, California. And then uh, going to Vegas that following, that weekend, that weekend right there. Saturday, February the 3rd, I'll be at Jokesters at the D Casino. That's down on Fremont Street, and that's in Las Vegas. And then Sunday, February the 4th, I'll be doing a spot at the Laugh Factory at the Tropicana, also in Las Vegas, Nevada. So you can catch me in any of those places coming up. And, of course, if you want to find out all my tour dates, go to underthecrossbones.com, click on tour dates, and you can see where I'm coming near you. Uh, there's a bunch of new new dates will be posted soon, waiting for my assistant get to get back from his vacation to take care of that for me. We have a sponsor for the show today, T Public. Yeah, T-shirts, pirate T-shirts, awesome pirate T-shirts. They, uh, uh, T Public works with independent. <clears throat> did you hear my voice crack on that one? T Public. I'm going through puberty uh, during this episode. T Public is a company that works with independent artists, 
and they uh, they uh, pay them for the shirts that they create. Uh, they pay me for selling some of the shirts to you guys. It's it's a really all around good deal, and they have got an amazing selection of T-shirts uh, in all sorts of themes. But I have curated, hand curated over a hundred super cool pirate t-shirts just for you to check out there's scary ones there's funny ones there's sexy ones there's all sorts of good stuff there and i know there's a pirate t-shirt there that you will want so go to under the crossbones.com slash shirt and you can see all the shirts that i have picked out for you so uh, again that's under the crossbones.com slash shirt you can get all the show notes for today's episode at under the crossbones.com slash one two four and if you would like to donate to the show uh support the show that kind of stuff uh, it's uh, go to under the crossbones.com slash support. There's a PayPal box. You can stick a donation in there of any amount that you please. There's an Amazon banner. If you're buying some stuff for yourself on Amazon, click that Amazon banner. Amazon kicks me back a few shekels for that. And if you want to be a sponsor of the show, that is awesome too. You can hit me up from there and we'll hook you up. It's cheap. It's easy. Under the crossbones.com slash support. All right. So let's get into this. We are now going to hear my talk with Eric Nelson the writer-director, and Kirby Hayborn, a.k.a. Captain Kirk, from Pirates of the Great Salt Lake. Check it out. So we are here talking about Pirates of the Great Salt Lake today, and uh, we have Eric Nelson, who is the writer-director, and uh, Kirby Hayborn, who played uh, Captain Kirk Redgrave. Thank thank goodness you named him Captain Kirk. That is so fantastic. <laughs> there's like no there's no better name for a captain, you know. I mean, <laughs> right. I'm I'm a I'm a, a Redskins fan, so our first tangent and our current quarterback is named Kirk and they nicknamed him Captain Kirk. So there you go. Excellent. Okay, so uh, Eric, for the people who haven't seen the film yet, give us the give us the log line, give us the five cent tour I'm, of the I'm film. I'm pretty sure that everybody's seen it, so that, that is <laughs> that's kind of a uh, one of the biggest movie. Wait, no, that wasn't our movie, huh? It wasn't one of the biggest <laughs> of all times. So yeah, for for the vast majority of of the population who have not seen the movie, it's what what is gosh, you know? Here here's the thing: is I am. Well, it was 10 years ago that we did this Kirby plus, right? Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So like, like my elevator pitch, the log lines all, I should have, you know, <laughs> let's see what well, it basically it's, it is a story of, uh, of two friends trying to live the life of, uh, uh, Johnny Depp style pirates of the Caribbean pirate in modern day Utah. That is a, a unique angle on the whole pirate thing. Yeah. Where, where did it come from? Where did it come from? <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's like one of those deeper, like meta questions, like, you know, what's, right. the, mean, what's the meaning of life? You know, how, 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 are, why are we here? Where did pirates in the great Salt Lake come from? Um, you know, uh, it, honestly, it, it, it started, uh, with the title, you know, uh, I had a writing okay. partner, Nathan Phillips, uh, he also helped produce the movie, um, and uh, he and I were kind of sit, sitting around one day. We thought we were making another movie at the time, and then kind of a few things happened that changed the course, and we weren't going to be able to make that movie. And so, like, but we were presented with an opportunity, to, like, uh, and basically the, the things that happened that changed the course were like the budget that we thought we had, we no longer had, but uh-huh. we realized that we had, we still had a chance with a smaller budget, and so what could we do? uh on kind of on a smaller scale uh at least you know um so we started just kind of talking and messing around and and somehow uh, you know pirates of the caribbean was big at the time uh-huh. and the title pirates of the great salt lake popped out and we thought okay so there's something funny right <laughs> you know sure. I mean, just like immediately i could envision just these two guys you know pretending living this this fantasy world uh, you know, and, and that's somewhat, somewhat, you know, uh, brushes up against reality and, and, uh, <laughs> and, and we just kind of ran with it. We're like, okay, let's see where this goes. So where were you in your career as a filmmaker at that point? Is this your first film? Had you done some stuff before? You know, I had worked, this was my first feature, uh, that I, that belonged to me basically. You know, I'd worked on okay. other projects. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, my background, I, I grew up one of those kids with a VHS camera in the eighties and nineties. Okay. And, 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 uh, I guess it was really the nineties, but, um, you know, just playing around storytelling with my best friend, you know, whenever we had time after school on the weekends, that kind of thing. And, and, uh, you know, and eventually I, I went through, uh, through BYU 
and studied film there. And, okay. and uh, out of that, I worked on uh, various indie projects uh, in Utah. There was a, a big Mormon cinema movement that was kind of in full swing back in the early thousands. Okay. Is that the decade? Is that what we call that decade? I, I'm still I not so. <laughs> still not clear. The odds. I've heard the odds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. And so, yeah, so I worked on a few projects here and there. I, you know, went to school with Jared Hess, who made Napoleon Dynamite. And that you know uh-huh. that obviously came out and crossed you know boundaries and and uh-huh. uh, you know became a, a huge independent hit of it you know on its own. And uh, yeah, so it was like there was I mean there was you know there was belief you know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> in the in you know not only in, in the opportunity to 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 make these movies but to actually be somewhat financially successful with them and get them seen you know by by kind of a mass audience sure. um so yeah i mean i you know was able to kind of find some people who uh, you know essentially financed pirates and and uh you know went with there but but it was it was my it was my first um my first feature film. Yeah. Fantastic. And Kirby, how'd you get involved? Um, I don't know. How did I get involved, Eric? <laughs> I just always how feel like we've been involved? friends from the beginning. Yeah, I, you I know, think I, I, I knew think what Nate I, Phillips. I, I, well, you, you, you met miles who was my, who was actually the, uh, right. My best friend as a kid, he was the guy that I made videos with back in the day. But I think prior to that, like you and I had met at, uh, at some film festival or another, and I had written this script that that I tried to sneak into your hands um, <laughs> because I, I you were super famous and like you know like Huge. big time stuff, and I was trying I was trying to work around your agent, and uh, <laughs> you know, just kind of this this young up and comer, and, and uh, yeah, I, I don't I, I, you know like the, the the first project that we had. Uh, that that I that the movie that I thought I was making with Nate before I made Pirates, we actually had talked to you about, and you were going to be in that movie, um, which was the Super Zero concept. Do you yes, remember that? I do. Yeah. I love that yeah. one. Yeah, it's uh, that that was yeah that, w- that would have been a fun movie too. Um, and then yeah, and then when that kind of unraveled, um, we you know we'd already had been talking to you about that movie, and so we wrote Pirates specifically for you. Um, you know, uh, with you in mind. So, I mean, Kirby was, was our captain Kirk from the start, you know, we, nice. but I, uh, you know, I think, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of where you and I, 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 my first recollection of meeting you was, was at some film festival and somewhere in California. Yeah. And yeah. And you know, you, and then I was, probably I don't, knew probably don't was, even remember it. <laughs> I was friends so, with uh, Nate and Miles, and I yeah, think you just knew Nate we, and Miles. I think that probably helped once once we once we moved into the uh, yeah, because I, I actually had written Super Super Zero when I was living in Bakersfield, and so I think you and I yeah some, at some point I had been talking to them, and yeah some some way or somehow you know it it, it all worked out. Yeah. <laughs> so the lesson here is it's really all about who you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. It is. So, I wouldn't have been able to make it if I didn't know these people. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There so you go. the 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 life of independent film is always a strange one because it's not it's not huge trailers and and craft services. Uh, and if there is craft services, it's usually pizza. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I've been there too. Peanut butter and jelly. You know. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what kind of production? I mean, going in, you said you had some financing and things like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. What uh, going with the with the amount of money that you had, did you go, we can make a huge thing. This is going to be great. Or was it we have to tighten our belts a little bit and, and make do? Well, uh, you know, in, in indie film, like for us. Yeah, I mean, we had a, like our budget for Pirates was two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, and so the goal was to make as big a movie as possible as we could on as tight budget as we had, which was, I mean, uh-huh. that's, I mean, that's literally nothing when it comes to filmmaking, you know. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, you know, we had to do, you know, I mean, we tried to pay everybody fairly, but in lieu of payment, you know, we we did favors. Um, we can't really, we don't want to talk about that. I probably shouldn't have brought that up. Most of us are trying to block those out still. <laughs> um, but, but, 
you, you know, know what you I know, think? Yeah, it's, I think the budget where it was really added to the story because these were two sure. guys that were dreaming like big, huge pirates. And um, in actuality, they didn't have the funding. And so their big epic battles and stuff were going to be with wooden fake swords. So I think the budget actually <laughs> helped in this case, the fact that we had to be creative to make it look like it's an epic because it was in their minds. I know Kirk had a Don Quixote type um, oh, mentality and viewpoint of the world. So I think that just made it even, I think it served it better. Yeah, yeah I, I can that, see. Yeah. That's a, or, or at least that's a really good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We no, I think that's a valid that point. I mean, I, you know, I think definitely, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I I mean, it's always you, you get on a set and, and you, you know, you, you realize that you're working at, at like not even 1% of, of what some of these, yeah. these huge budget blockbusters get made for. But certainly, but yeah. at the same time, um, it, yeah, it forces a certain kind of creativity out of you. Right. And, and I think that's, that's an excellent, um, it's an excellent exercise in, in artistry is, you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes, you know, in life, you know, we're, you know, we're forced into kind of these, these, uh, these boundaries, right. And, and kind of the only way I, I think to, to break outside of them is to, is to, you know, kind of, be creative, you know? Certainly. Yeah. No, I, I actually do think that uh, is very apt for the film. Cause like you said, this is coming out right after the first pirates of the Caribbean film, I think, which 2000. Well, I think, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, the first, the first one had, had been, had been made and we knew the other two were coming. So, uh-huh. I, you know, it wasn't so much a, you know, I mean, you can look at it you can say, okay, so we're going to try and spoof the movie, but it wasn't a spoof, you know, you could Certainly. say it was a cat. You could say it was a cash grab. I, I, I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> Uh, I, but I would say definitely we, we, we were hoping to ride kind of the wave of, 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 you know, that, that pulp, that pop, uh, culture, um, you know, craze that ha- had kind of swept the nation to some degree at that point, because, mm-hmm. you know, those the pirates was those first, you know, those first couple, at least, you know, they were huge. Certainly. And, and so, yeah, absolutely. We, we, you know, I mean, out, outside of the movie, you know, I'm like, even we started writing the movie and, 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 and about these, these two guys, uh, you know, um, Kirk and Flint. And then, uh, we started, once we had it written and we went into pre-production and we started basically contacting people, uh, you know, for help with props and costumes and things like that. Like we met, uh, we met people in real life who actually were Kirk and Flint, (laughs) which I hadn't known, you know, prior to, to, prior to writing them. I mean, I knew that there were LARPers and things like that, but there was, there was an actual, like, I mean, huge, and it still exists, you know, pirate community. I mean, that's part of why we're on, I guess this podcast, right. Is exactly. Yeah. Because there are people who, you know, who love this stuff and, and, and they live in this world. And that's, I mean, it's essentially like their religion in, in, in a lot of ways, you know, it's how they, you know, um, it gives them kind of a framework to engage life and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I think embrace it, you know, I mean, I, I think it's amazing. Yeah, definitely. And you, you tapped it at the right time because it was right about that, that first Pirates of the Caribbean movie where there was this resurgence. A lot of the people that I talked to on this show are like, I saw the first Pirates of the Caribbean and I knew I wanted to be a pirate. So mm-hmm. you were, you were tapping in right at the right time there. And I yeah, like there was. I even like that there's there's reference in your film to uh, Johnny Deppie's Ruined Pirates, which, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> which also a lot of people in the pirate scene think is absolutely true as well, that, that you know, uh, the more uh, traditional historical types do think that Johnny Depp is ruined, ruined pirates. Anyway, <laughs> well, certainly they were, they romanticized what, you know, uh, what pirates are. And I guess, but, but that, I mean, that's our, that's always existed. I mean, pirate films have been along for, been around for a long long time well before sure uh, the career you know before uh that franchise uh you know kind of came into light and you know and so you know i mean errol flynn and 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 even there was some there was a cheesy D- a disney one or two you know way 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 back mm-hmm. oh sure yeah the classic treasure yeah. island and all yeah, that yeah exactly stuff. Yeah. yeah so kirby let's dig into your background a little bit how where do you come from how did you get into acting uh you know as a kid i was always performing and doing community theater and plays and stuff. And, um, I thought I was going to be a musician. So while I was in college, I was pursuing 
music full time and mm-hmm. had an opportunity to do a play where they needed me to provide my own music. So I was a character that played the guitar and sang. Uh-huh. And some of the actors in it said, hey, you should get an agent. So I went and auditioned for an agent and then started booking. The first thing I booked was an Idaho lottery commercial. <laughs> and then I just started booking a lot of things. I was really fortunate to just keep working hard and gain experience that way. So I dropped the music and pursued the acting. And then uh, just that's what I still do now. I do commercials. I do a lot of voiceover and audiobooks, And I get to live the dream now. It's it's um I I've, I've gone through a similar thing except I didn't end up in acting I ended up in stand up comedy but I started out in music as well and so that um that jack of all trades thing as a performer is super important to be able to pull off any of that kind of stuff absolutely because you need to see that unless you hit pay dirt and you're in a big superhero movie you've got to be diverse and you need to have. Right. Once the when commercials are slow, I've got a lot of audiobooks. When audiobooks are slow, I can uh, pursue some film projects. So yeah, you, yeah, when you're a blue collar level guy like I am uh, as an actor, you have to have all those jack trades. That's what right, they're called, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll call it that <laughs> Captain, Captain Jack trades. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Keep audiobooks, that man. Thing. That's a audiobooks, that's a slog. That's those are my brother's done some of those in his voiceover work, and that is a lot of work. It is. But it's great. <laughs> and it's awesome. You have to have a certain personality for it. So I think I know your brother well then. Because you have to enjoy <laughs> being alone for six to eight hours a day in a solitary right. booth talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and thinking, mm, I do sound like a really angry woman right now. Congratulations. <laughs> I think I need to rethink my career. That's, that's... Uh, a little bit of padding in that small room and you'll be all exactly. set. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I say the padding is for the acoustics and stuff, but it's really because you do go crazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so how long did you guys spend uh, in, in actual filming for this, not including editing and stuff, say? Uh, not very long. You know, uh, Nate and I wrote the script in a week. So oh, wow. we pro- we probably in retrospect maybe should have spent a little longer on it, but whatever. We we're like we were, <laughs> we're we were going for it. We were you know um, we you know we were kind of time crunched as it was, and so uh, we got it you know written very quickly. And then our our actual production was three weeks. So okay, uh, yeah, twenty one days in basically everywhere. Uh, you know every part of Utah that we could. You yeah. could hit in that time, essentially. Which yeah, is something that's beautiful about Utah that I love is mm-hmm. it's so diverse in its locations. You've got oh, the yeah. beautiful mountains. You've got the desert when we were out at the Salt Flats, the, playing it as heaven. That was perfect. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, the you locations know, I mean, are there's a great The Great Salt Lake, I think, is one of the most – I mean, people know about it like in Utah, but you'd be surprised like how few um, people actually visit there. And I and in in the summer it's understandable we got a we got a taste of that when we when we shot out there, mm-hmm. uh-huh. but it's really kind of I mean it's it's this desolate dead lake you know and it, and it doesn't fit like the 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 you know like what kind of most people think of when you when you think of beauty or paradise you know that kind of thing, but but it, it is it's 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 its own kind it is. of it's very like, beautiful paradise out there yeah. It, it's yeah it's amazing like you you know I mean just just the the contrast of 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 that that flat salt water that kind of goes on forever, you know, in, in the middle of the, of the desert. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And Eric, you said so, that yeah. uh, not many Utahns really go there or appreciate it. And that's true. Sure. While we were there filming the people that were there swimming in it, there were a lot of Germans and their mm-hmm. uh, little speedos <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Just, which is funny. I, no, I, absolutely. Me, I mean, I, I didn't grow up, you know, I grew up in the East and in, in uh, Northern Virginia, DC area. And, you know, I, but I've lived here uh, in Utah for, uh, uh, for over 20 years now. Um, but I, you know, I still meet, you know, people who've grown up here all who, who have never been out to the great Salt Lake. And, and, and it's just kind of shocks me. It's, it's, I guess, it's one of those things where, you know, I guess, you know, you don't realize kind of the treasure in your own backyard or, you know, kind of thing. And, and, uh, 
But to me, that you know, it, 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 it like I was in the summer. I mean, like I said, there are you know, um, kind of one of the things that we ran into and in, when we were out uh, <laughs> making the movie was was all the bugs. I mean, so there's there's a lot yeah. of insects and, and things like that. And then it kind of because it's a, a dead lake, sometimes you get this this sulfuric smell, uh-huh. which certainly can can be off putting. Mm-hmm. Um, you get used to it. Trent though. used to have. Yeah, well, yeah, you do, right? I mean, <laughs> but uh, but you know, in, in the in the early spring and in the late fall, um, it, none of that is there, and it's 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 amazing. Um, I, I I really love. I I don't know. I may, I have a soft spot for there. I I, I uh, you know, obviously because we we made the movie out there, and then like like since um, you know, one of the things that I've personally gotten into in recent years is, is trail running. I spend a lot of time doing that. And, uh, the great salt Lake is one of my favorite places to run. It's just, it's, it's pretty rad. Nice. And I think it, the, the, the desolateness of that Lake was perfect to sort of reflect what the characters were going through. Anyway, it had been a crowded Lake. It would have been a completely different kind of vibe. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Again, that was, I think that was, you know, um, you know, on, it worked on a lot of different levels for sure. There were there were uh, there two things that I remember because it's been a couple of weeks since I watched the film now. Sure, and uh, sure. the the um, the scene where they run into the the old couple picnicking, I thought was uh-huh. absolutely hilarious. Where she keeps offering yeah. them food and he can't take. Very very funny. Right. And then anything with Larry Bagby in it. How much of a gem <laughs> is that guy playing that character? <laughs> I know. I, he scared Eric uh, the first day because. Larry had said to me, he, he goes, Kirby, there's this guy that I know that I grew up in my church that uh, was this crazy drug addict who, who would come to church and just try really hard. Um, but, and he sounded, and Larry did an impersonation of him, and it was the character that Larry plays in Pirates. And I said, that is so funny. And he already understood every nuance of that guy. So he said, I think I'm going to do that. What do you think? And I said, I think it'll be great. So on the first day, I remember Eric coming from behind the camera after the first take with Larry and him saying, so is is this what you're going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was all, what, what's the matter, Larry? Do you Are have you a sick cold? or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, no, this is what he's doing. Isn't like, yeah, it brilliant? It was, completely, it was a hundred eight, hundred and eighty degrees different from what we had rehearsed. Yeah, right? and he, yeah, he totally like just just pulled it out on me, like without warning. And I seriously had a, a you know a, a WTF yeah. moment there, where I was like, <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait a second. It's like somebody get Larry some cold medicine because you know. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna spend a lot of time looping his his, his voice <laughs> yeah. you know in post right you know and yeah but th- yeah then he kind of pulled me aside or I pulled him that we pulled each other aside we'll go with that and <laughs> uh, you know he, he yeah he kind of talked to me through this 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 like new vision that he had for for Drake for that character and I was like okay um, this is this is like what indie film to some degree is all about is taking chances you know kind of sure. like this and and to me like I you know I, I could see the genius in it but I knew it was also a big chance because I, I think and, and we saw it to you know to some degree in you know in the way that his character played uh, for audiences is you either loved what he did or you absolutely hated yeah. it Right and like I, you know, I I loved it. Uh, you know, and the, and like the more, uh, you know, the more uh, we got into that character as time went on during production, and then especially in post and watching the movie. I mean, it just it, it, it you know it totally grew on me. Yeah, and, I loved and, it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought I thought it, you know he made an, an amazing choice, and and I loved. It. Even the way the way that he surprised it, <laughs> I think if we'd have rehearsed it, maybe maybe he would have given me time to uh, to you know to to second guess that decision and say no, let's go back to something more safe. But uh-huh. but uh, he, right, it was a that, huge that he, risk. He pulled it out right there on the set, and at that point, yeah, we're we're going with it. Okay, let's do it. You know, yeah, it was it was. I think definitely it was it was uh, kind of a risky move, but but ultimately, yeah, that character is, is super memorable. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and Larry, and Larry's an amazing talent and, and, uh, he did, you know, he did, I think he, he, he created this guy that, you know, uh, we still try to impersonate and, and can't. Yeah. At least I, I don't know. <laughs> Kirby can do anything. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. I, it, it threw me for the first couple minutes cause I was going, mm-hmm. 
does he have a cold? Is that actually his voice? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And then, but after a couple minutes of it, I was like, I figured I was like, no, they made that choice. And that is such yeah. an amazing choice because it does set the character apart from sort of, um, because otherwise it almost struck me like he would have been like 80s comedy movie villain. Yeah, uh, sure, You know, sure. where he's, you know, that kind of thing. But the voice just took it up another notch where it was, okay, now this is something different and unique. So I thought that was, I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so going into filming, did you already have distribution secured or did that come after? No. No, we had nothing. Yeah, it was nothing. it was a it was a big indie leap of faith. Dream, yeah, you know, for us is exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I uh, you know, I had known. I mean, I believed, uh, you know, in in my ability. Um, I believed in in um, you know the 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 ability of the crew that I had worked with. I believed, this, you know, a hundred percent the ability of my actors. And I, you know, I, I thought we had, you know, we had something unique. We had something special and, you know, we were going to, we were going to go to the film festival market and, and we were going to get into Sundance and, you know, <laughs> and we were going to uh, do big things and, you know, and so that was, that was like, that was part of the reason why we kind of rushed through um, uh, the schedule the way that we did is because we wanted to submit to Sundance that year. That was the sure. first uh, 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 festival that we submitted to. Uh-huh. We submitted and we didn't get in. Uh-huh. Um, we did. We did uh, premiere in uh, San Francisco, which was an amazing um, festival. Okay. Um, the, the Sundance, though, like one of the one of the final judges, she reached out to me after the fact, and she worked with Tom Hanks Company. Um, and th- that kind of opened up a couple of doors, like f- for me and Kirby later on down the road. So like, you know, it, it definitely got seen and, and it, I think we were just one year after Napoleon dynamite and, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't know all the details of how judging works, but, but, you know, regardless, we didn't play that festival, but we played San Francisco. We played in Indianapolis. We played a, a whole bunch of festivals all over the U S and everywhere we went, we had, you know, really strong, uh, audience, uh, you know, uh, I guess reactions. We had, you know, uh-huh. great attendance, sold out shows, you know, and, and, and I, you know, I mean, obviously so, some festivals you're hit or miss. It, sure. it depends on, you know, um, but, but we, you know, we won awards, you know, we did well, we, we reached out to, we, you know, we had, uh, um, uh, an article, you know, a review in variety, uh, we had some some agents reach out to us and you know interested in possibly repping slash selling the film and we kind of played that game for a little while um but it, it was it, it didn't you know it, it never quite caught fire at least as early as as uh as we hoped you know so like ultimately um we ended up cold calling mtv oh and uh we got a hold of them and uh they expressed interest and we we arranged a screening for them uh on talk like a pirate day and we did we did screenings for for uh basically a a bunch of different audiences all over the u.s on uh, i think it was i want to say it was like 2000 late 2006 okay or was it 2007 already we shot the movie in 2005 I think it w- it might have been 2007 by the time that we had gotten a hold of MTV. Okay. So, um, uh, anyway, yeah. So we 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 uh, rented a theater in um, in at Universal. What was what was, was that in in California, Kirby? What's that place called? Universal? Is it Studio City? What is it? No. Yeah, that was uni- Yeah, that was Universal in Universal City. Universal is Studios. What it's Universal. Yeah. Uni- Universal. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we re- we rented a theater there. Uh, on, on talk like a pirate day with the intention of screening it for MTV uh, for a bunch of executives from, from their company. Uh-huh. And, and the only thing like I, at that point, like I, I had kind of taken on the marketing of the movie and, and like we had really leveraged MySpace. That was the big, uh, you know, social network at, at that time. Sure. And so we, we'd had a, we had a really solid following on MySpace, and I had, I had made contact with, uh, uh one of the people, you know, who, who worked for, for MySpace and, and they actually promoted our movie, um, on their front page and in, in, in the markets that nice. we were going to play in that day. One of them being LA mm-hmm. and I think we were in Portland and we did a couple out East and we did one in Utah as well. So we had a whole bunch of different screens, uh, going that day, um, 
but the LA obviously was the, was the biggest one for us because at that point, you know, we really wanted to, and we thought MTV would be a great perfect uh, fit, fit yeah. for us, you know, in sure. terms of, of, yeah, in terms of the, you know, what the movie was and the audience and that kind of stuff. So, and, and it actually, you know, it turned out, it turned out amazing that, that screening. Like I remember um, going to the theater, getting there a couple hours early to kind of, you know, run through tech and uh there was already a line yeah <laughs> you know and i was like to me it was it, you know it was like okay this is my star wars experience i was i mean literally there was a line outside the theater that that went on like around the corner kind of thing nice. for people who had come to see my movie that you know and ultimately um or our movie kirby I, you know, you're the guy you, you know what i mean you're the guy <laughs> um <laughs> you know but uh um you know, so like ultimately we ended up, uh, we just rented like a, I don't know, I think the house that, that we had rented was like 300 seats or something like that. And we ended up upgrading to the biggest, you know, uh, house that they had in the theater with the balcony and we sold that out and we actually ended up adding a second screen because so many people showed up. Um, so again, you know, I, 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 like to me, that was like, we're in a market outside of Utah, um, and, you know, we'd done very minimal, um, advertising with it. We hadn't paid a cent, right. you know, just my, uh -huh. you know, like I said, my space kind of supported us a little bit with one, like with a little, uh, with a little feature. Um, and, and we had an audience and, and I, like, I, I was like, okay, this is, you know, I know that this thing can play, you know, it's not, you know, it can, can play just about mm -hmm. anywhere basically. Sure. Um, and, you know, and the screening went well and, and like it, it all seemed very positive with MTV, but at the end of the day, I think for whatever reason they had some, they were trying to figure out the direction that they were headed with their uh, film department uh, internally. Um, and they didn't make an offer, but one of the guys that we had been talking to referred us to the Weinstein company. Uh -huh. And uh, ultimately we, we started talking to them, screened the movie for them and, and, they liked it and they came in and, and offered us a distribution deal, which ultimately was a direct to video kind of thing at that point. It, you know, all the pirates movies had kind of come out. Um, you know, I, I, and you know, it, 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 uh, it was solid, you know, I mean, we were, we were obviously thrilled one to, to finally get a deal. And two, I mean, you know, the Weinsteins, I mean, regardless of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the current press is, uh, you know, unfortunately on them at that point, you know, they were a very, very, you know, powerful, you know, name. Certainly. And, uh, and we were, we were thrilled to, to, you know, to, to ink a deal with them. And so, uh, I handed over the movie to them and, and that was kind of, that's kind of where, you know, I, you know, I guess positively and negatively, it's kind of where it ended. You know, I, I had, I, you know, it was kind of a learning experience, I guess, for me in a lot of ways, because, uh, when I, when we gave them the movie, I kind of thought that, that they were actually going to do something with it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's the thing. Like it's all these and, things. It's, yeah. you never know in the independent film industry, you yeah. finally get the funding. Yeah. Sure which is a dream, which is amazing. That's better than 99% of other scripts that get written. And then you make it and it comes off sure. and it looks like a great film. And then you have the promise of an MTV mm -hmm. screening. So you think, great, we're there. And then you have the promise of the Weinsteins saying, hey, we'd like it. So like there's so many things yeah. along the way that are so many steps and, and you just have to be happy with how far you make it. But that's oh, exactly absolutely. it. We were and, like, and, we got and, the Weinsteins, know, awesome. Now, what are they going to do? <laughs> right, right. <Yeah. laughs> you know, in retrospect, definitely. I think that, that, that's the, really the only way, I don't know, I guess there's lots of ways that you could look at it, but that's the healthiest. <laughs> yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, but yeah, I, you know, I thought, you know, I, I don't know, I, I had, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I mean, I thought that they were going to actually like market it somewhat, um, you know, that, but you know, really they, they did nothing. And, uh, you know, it was basically, it, it ended up being, I think they had a deal with Blockbuster where they provided them so many titles and that's uh -huh. kind of what we were, you know, we were, yeah. you know, uh, uh, basically a, another title to fulfill that deal. Um, and, you know, had, had I known it was going to end up playing out that way, you know, I probably would have kept marketing in, on my own, you know, kind of sure. thing, because it, you know, um, I, I had kind of, taking it that far but at the same time you know i don't know i it, it was it, yeah like i said i mean uh, it, in in retrospect um 
you learn a few things, but uh, you know, at the same time, I, you know, like I think my perspective on, on kind of what Kirby just explained is like, I, I look at it in terms of like indie film in terms of a baseball game. Right. right. Um, and so I, I got up to the plate and I swung as hard as I could. I wanted to hit that home run, you know? Um, and you know, the ball came in, I made contact and I hit a single, you know, um, I got on base uh, you know, I, I, the home run obviously would have been, you know, a film that got me another movie. It made me, you know, a fair amount of money. Um, but instead, you know, I was able to, you know, get kind of the costs, you know, from the deal, uh, that we signed, you know, uh, production costs back and, uh-huh. and I got my movie distributed on, you know, I mean, literally it was, it was, it was a nationwide, you know, deal. You know, we were in video stores all over the place, you know, we were on Netflix, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 we got, you know, there are so many indie filmmakers who, who just strike out, you know, and, sure. and so to get on base, it, it, it was, I mean, it was a, it was a very, very, uh, I mean, it was a success, yeah. you know, and is, and, you know, ultimately it was a dream come true, um, you know, in a lot of ways as well. So certainly, yeah, definitely. So what, uh, what are you working? There's two questions here. What happened mm-hmm. after that for both of you guys yeah. and what's happening now? What are you working on? Well, I'll answer for Kirby. <laughs> he's, he's uh, super famous. <laughs> and, uh, he's won how, how many Academy oh, Awards now? Kirby? Too many to count. <laughs> <laughs> too many to count. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I mean, Kirby has done very well. You know, he's, he's he, uh, he, like, I mean, he's still working in, in the entertainment industry and, and, and I'll let him answer for himself and, and, in, in a, you know, in a minute, but, uh, but, you know, he's, you know, he, he's been able to, uh, I, I'm very impressed with the career moves that he's made thus far. And, 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 you know, I think that there are still, um, some stories that I think he and I are, are working on together that we hope to tell. Um, you know, in, in the meantime, like my career, uh, after pirates, uh, you know, kind of, I don't know what the, what the easiest way to tell it is, is, you know, I, I got into a lot of doors and it it just, it was like one of those things where like either I wasn't the right guy or it just didn't, it just didn't, you know, I wasn't in the right time or place, you know, I was either too early or too late. I mean, cause I literally like after pirates, you know, we, I had meetings with like Tom Hanks's company and with, uh, I pitched the thing to Fox, I, you know, worked with Disney on a couple of things and, and for whatever reason, you know, all those projects just never came to into being, you know, uh-huh. never, never really. So ultimately I kind of decided, well, I'm going to make my own movie again. <laughs> you know, I did it once sure. I can do it again. And, and I thought I had funding for it and, and we, we started actually working on it. And then kind of, uh, the stock market fell to pieces and uh, I lost what funding that I thought that I had. And basically, you know, some other kind of things happened where just uh, essentially that dream kind of imploded for, for, uh, um, so I started working again on other, on other projects and in, in marketing. That's, that was kind of a skill set that I had picked up. Uh, obviously with pirates was, was basically marketing that movie, um, you know, building the audience, you know, essentially one person at a time, uh, on my space. And then, you know, through other, um, kind of, you know, online, uh, uh, plans, I guess that we had executed. Right. I think, Uh, let me just say something uh, real quick. I think it was that you were a little too early. I think had Facebook been around the way it is now, yeah. On pirates, on yeah. pirates. Had Facebook yeah. been around yeah. and um, other social media apps like Instagram, and had they been strong like mm-hmm. they are now, I think we could have found more of an mm-hmm. independent audience and gotten people to buy the DVDs sure. and stuff or download it digitally. Oh, um, I also think I, I, you probably don't realize this, but the, what you did on pirates was the first instance that I had seen of crowdfunding to be able to get yeah, the movie yeah. forward. I, I do, I do realize you do this. realize this. So you were too <laughs> early first, on that too. It, yes, no, been just that, like a year later, yeah, you would have started I Kickstarter. I know that's, that's the thing is I was too like self, like, I, I guess, you know, there, there's small picture and there's big picture, right? It's like, yeah, we, like one of the things that we did to, to, to get pirates out there was, you know, I mean, I had seen, 
um, you know, at, at the time, uh, like, you know, um, Lord of the Rings was also big and uh-huh. they had created this fan club where they put all the, the fans in the credits and we're like, okay, how can we basically take that and, and use it to our advantage? So we, we came up with this idea. We needed some money at that point to kind of help, uh, continue our, our, our efforts to find uh, distribution. Uh-huh. So we created this fan club and basically there were levels of the, of the club that you could join, um, you know, ranging, I think from as little as $5 all the way up to, I, I don't think there was a max, you know, I think we had a few people, I think that, that put in 5,000. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, and you gave rewards um, like, you it know, was- but then like for, yeah, for five dollars, yeah, you got you got like a, a certificate that basically said you're part of the fan club. For like twenty dollars, we give you a DVD once it got made, and then like there were others that came with the T-shirts and things like that and posters. Um, yeah, and and then yeah, a year or so later, we, I, I saw this thing called Kickstarter. Like that's my <laughs> idea. Like, oh wait a second! <laughs> yeah, I did those this. guys yeah. invent or you know? donate to pirates? He went through the credits. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. You know, but yeah, it's a like big picture. Like, I, I, who knows if I if I would have had the, you know, obviously the the ability to put something like that together. But it was it was that same concept, just executed, um, thinking in terms of helping others, whereas you know mine was executed thinking in terms of of trying to get me to where I wanted to be at the time, kind of thing. You know? Certainly, yeah, but. But, but yeah, you know, it was, it was, you know, it, it was, <laughs> um, you know, ultimately that kind of, you know, led me into, um, you know, led me t- to where I am today, which is, you know, a few years ago, I, I took kind of a full-time marketing gig. You know, I had a couple of kids that, uh-huh. that, uh, that obviously I needed to take care of and that, that'll and do, yeah. so I needed something yeah. that <laughs> needed something that mm-hmm. was a little more stable. You sure. know? Uh, that's not to say that I'm never going to work creatively again um but you know for for the past few years it's just, it's been backburnered for sure well then uh, you have plenty of time on your hands kirby <laughs> what are you doing now? um well i've been fortunate kidding. i keep uh, pursuing my passion of acting and uh, after pirates i did a couple more films um then i had an opportunity to work with my second biggest hero first hero is eric Nelson, <laughs> second biggest hero. I got to work with the Fairley brothers oh. on um, the Three Stooges, and that was a dream come true. And they're as kind as the rumors say. Nice. They'd give you the shirt off their backs. And since then, Pete has put me in a bunch of commercials just because once you're a friend of Pete, they're called FOPs. You're an FOP for life. Okay. <laughs> so. And it's amazing. And you can see the FOPs on set. And we all now kind of congregate on commercials and stuff. Like, uh-huh. we know each other now. So I did that. And that was a highlight. I love that. And uh, my audiobook career has just really taken off. Nice. I read between 50 and 80 books a year. Wow. Um, I was just nominated for the sixth year in a row as one of the top voices of the year. Woohoo! I get to do it all. I'm still in my pajamas and a cardigan sweater right now <laughs> in my isolation booth. Nice. Yeah. It's awesome. It's the greatest and, and And you worked with Kate Upton. That's all I had. <laughs> yeah. I got to work with Kate Upton. Um, yeah. I was, I was calling Kirby every day uh, when he was Just on take set. some pictures. Okay, what, 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 yeah. What's she doing now? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Was was that was that on the Three Stooges film? I saw it, but I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah she, she played one it. of the nuns. Oh, the, okay. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. I really enjoyed the Three Stooges film. I thought it was uh, the best possible update they could have done for that for that type. I of think comedy. so too. Yeah. And you know why great. is because those guys, both Pete and Bobby, they reverenced the Stooges the way uh-huh. they needed to be. They didn't look at them as a means to make money. Right. It was. We love these guys, and they're so great too. Because the Stooges families, they got screwed sure. on royalties and everything, and so they took care of them. Had invited their families to the premieres, um, gave portions of the profits to their families. Oh, that's great! And it was just, it was just amazing. Like that's the type of guys they are. Yeah, they talk about poop and semen and hair and stuff, <laughs> but they're good guys. I don't think comedy can exist without any of right. those 
<laughs> I agree. <laughs> they have they to be there. <laughs> ha- that's a rule of comedy. Yeah, as a stand-up comedian, you know that. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Well, that's fantastic. So, uh, so a couple things. Where is the best place for people to find Pirates of the Great Salt Lake now? Amazon. Amazon. Uh, okay, that's really where I got mine. The, uh, I think it's it's the last place that I that I know of. Either that or come over to my house. You, know, <laughs> you guys want to, you know, open door policy? Anybody who wants to watch pirates. There you go. <laughs> you know? Pirate festival at Eric's house. We're going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know. I mean. I think. I think. Like. I'm sure it's there. There are some pirated versions of it online, and, and you know, um, I always, I I remember like when it like. I, when we first re- when the DVD first hit hit the streets or whatever that like uh, uh, some friends of mine had had found um, you know pirated versions already like uh-huh. before it even came out and uh-huh. so that was that kind of always tickled me that people would pirate my pirate movie <laughs> yeah but, uh, <laughs> right uh, you know <laughs> but yeah you know I think you know if, if you want to watch it the right way um, it's it's yeah it's still on it's still on DVD um, available on Amazon. Okay, super. And Kirby, where is the best place online for people to keep track of what you're doing and stuff? You can go to my website, kirbyhayborn.com. Um, okay. You can go to audible.com and see I've done over 500 books. You can listen for the rest of your life to my <laughs> soporific <laughs> voice. <laughs> You've done 500 books already? Wow. I've, done, I've lost count now. It's well over 500, yeah. That's amazing. Wow. That's crazy. That's great. I, I'm a big reader. I don't even know if I've read 500 books. I know. <laughs> it's crazy to look back on it. And I've done everything from Gone Girl to Stephen King to uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I've done it all. That's fantastic. That's awesome, Kirby. Really great. That's great. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to do this today. I'm glad we were finally able to get it all together and uh, work through the technical difficulties and all that good stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Thanks, absolutely. Phil. I appreciate you reaching out to us, Phil, and and yeah, actually, you know, giving Kirby and I a little bit of a chance to relive kind of, you know, that story. For yeah. sure. For sure. And I'll make sure all the, all the stuff is linked up in the show notes so everybody can go check it out and uh, we'll find even more people to watch your movie. Great. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, at least like two more. Two That's more. All I'm, That's all we more. need. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think two more, and I'm back in the game. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have no idea how much truth there is to that statement. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Bye. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And there it is, friends. That is my interview with Kirby Hayborn and Eric Nelson from Pirates of the Great Salt Lake. Uh, if you like I said, if you haven't seen the movie yet, very fun movie. Uh, come on over to the show notes at episode uh, under the crossbones dot com slash one, two, four. And I will have a link to it on uh, Amazon that you can buy there. If you buy it through that link, Amazon kicks me back a little money, help support the show. You see the movie, you're helping everybody. You're helping to make the world a better place. If you want to find out more about everything that those guys are doing. Uh, you can go to facebook.com slash Pirates of the Great Salt Lake. Uh, Eric runs that page. Or if you want to see what Kirby's up to, go to kirbyhayborn.com, which is, that's such a great name. Uh, Kirby, spelled like Kirby, uh, Hayborn, H-E-Y-B-O-R-N-E, kirbyhayborn.com. And that'll all be linked up again in the show notes under the crossbones.com slash one, two, four. We're sponsored today by Pirate Radio of the Treasure Coast, WKKC-DB, playing the best music in Pirate Radio talk. Listen to Under the Crossbones on both their stations. Just go to PirateRadioOfTheTreasureCoast.com or PirateRadioTC.com. And don't forget to download their apps. That is the Pirate Radio Treasure Coast app. That's their music station. And the Pirate Radio Talk, which is obviously the talk station. And uh, you can listen Under the Crossbones on both those stations throughout the week. And uh, if you're listening there right now, Thanks. We appreciate it. Uh, if you've got if you if you've been to a cool pirate thing recently, um, a uh, event, seen a pirate band, done a pirate thing that was cool, whatever it is, I would like to hear about it uh, and possibly play your trip report on the show. Give me a call at four zero eight five nine nine two seven three three. Again, that's four zero eight. 
599-2733. That is my Google voice number. I will not answer it, so you can just leave me a voicemail there. And I think, I haven't figured it out yet, but I think it doesn't even say, like, hey, this is Phil or anything. I think it just kind of picks up. So it might be a little bit weird. But uh, anyway, if you have the right number, it'll just pick up. You leave me that message. And if it's cool, I'll play it on the show. Cool? Cool. That's our show for today, kids. Thanks again for tuning in. I always appreciate it. Again, you can get all the show notes under thecrossbones.com slash 124. Find out a little more about Pirates of the Great Salt Lake on Facebook slash Pirates of the Great Salt Lake and go dig into all the cool stuff that Kirby Hayborn is doing at kirbyhayborn.com. All that'll be in the show notes. We've got some killer episodes coming up uh, very soon. Next week, we're going to talk to Scarlett Deerheart from Deerheart's Do Dads about her new pirate business that she's been running. That's, she's got a great story behind it. Uh, we're going to talk to Ted Shred from Pirates for Hire. We're going to talk to Arnon Shore from the Pirate Captain Toledano, which uh, is a great short film. It's fantastic, and that is a really interesting episode, really interesting talk. All of them are. You're going to have a good time with these. Lots of great shows coming up, but that is it for this week. I'll see you next time. Yeah.